So welcome back to your students to the second session of gene transfer technique. We had previously mentioned about the vector based methods as well as the vector less methods. And once you have a vector, you can transfer, transfer these recombinant DNA which has been combined with a vector by certain techniques involving transformation or sometimes uh, gene transfer can ha happen between two different bacteria by conjugation or by the process of electroporation also we can do gene transfer this is a calcium chloride transformation method and uh, this is the electroporation method which i had mentioned in the previous video and now we have the next method the process of transduction now what is transduction a transduction is a process by which what happens a vector is being used to carry your gene of interest onto the particular host cell so sometimes you can have a natural vector and the, into the natural vector a natural vector not sorry a natural virus some viruses will be there it could be phage vectors as we had mentioned earlier in the previous sections so you have your therapeutic gene you incorporate the recombinant gene into the virus vector and the virus carrying the therapeutic gene in this case would infect the target cell now i'm not going more into the details of it just because i want to give you a brief on what can be used so there are different viral vectors which we can use and different viral vectors are having different capacities okay uh, that is the segments or the quantity of the foreign dna or the size of the quant the size of the dna which can be incorporated into various virus vectors would be of different types sometimes you have retroviruses sometimes you have adenoviruses you can have herpes virus or adeno associated virus or lentiviruses like that different viruses can be used as vectors to transfer a recombinant dna into the host cell now what is the host cell it depends upon what uh, what is your experiment or which host cell you want to transform it either sometimes it could be a if it's a bacteriophage vector which you're using you transfer the cells the back the dna might be into the bacteria or uh, might be if you are using if you want uh, if you're using a vector which can infect the mammalian cell you, know, you will be transform um, what do you do you do transducing yeah that's it uh, you're using a virus here to transfer the genetic material to the mammalian cells normally uh, the term transfection is used when you have to transfer any genetic material or recombinant dna into the mammalian cells now now let's talk about the next type of techniques like i had told you you have vectorless methods that is when you prepare something like a naked dna or a foreign gene of interest uh, need to be transferred into certain host cells uh, and when they are not being produced using vectors okay such techniques are called the vectorless methods now you can transfer them by various other techniques by chemical mediated gene transfers micro injection electroporation methods which we had previously also used in the case of vector based method the same methods can be used in the case of vectorless methods also and you can also use liposome mediated gene transfer methods now what chemicals can be used uh, you can use different method chemicals like sometimes uh, dea deae okay we'll be going to the details of that uh, in the coming sessions so now we're going to talk about the first one method which we have here is the liposome mediated gene transfer method here in this technique also you're taking a recombinant dna over here and it's a vector less method you take artificial lipid vesicles called the liposomes are created forming a bilayer around the dna so you take the dna or your gene of interest here and you can cover it using a lipid bilayer so it forms a what a liposome so the gene the gene of interest or the dna which has to be transferred into the host cell is being surrounded by a liposome and these capsules they will adhere to the cell membrane and fuse into it 
and usually you can see that these uh, liposomes they they are commercially available so you have your dna you just have to mix it with the liposomes with and create the liposomes and once these liposomes which containing the dna is been present they usually adhere to the host cell and uh, what happens a liposome bilayer fuses with the plasma membrane of the host cell and the dna enters into the cell and once the dna enters into the host cell the foreign gene will get expressed so this is a liposome mediated gene transfer now coming to the micro injection of dna the micro injection of dna it is a computer controlled needle uh, which is used to inject dna directly into the nucleus of a particular cell and it has been found to be a very reliable method but it is only performed one cell at a particular time so you take your dna and uh, you have to inject your or insert or inject it correctly using a needle into the nucleus of a particular cell so this is also a vectorless method where a, a foreign dna is incorporated into a host cell specifically talking the nucleus of the host cell not into the cytoplasm but into the nucleus so you have to uh, control it using a a computer and that's how the process is been carried out now micro injection uh, it has some advantages uh, that is no requirement of a marker gene is required and the introduction of the target gene is directly into a single cell and you can do an easy identification of the transform cells upon injection of the dye along with the dna so if if a cell is been injected using a dna you would also incorporate some amount of dye so if the dna is there uh, probably the dye also would be there and that could be used as a selection strategy and no requirement of selection of the transform cells using antibiotic resistance or herbicide resistance markers is needed as in the case of vectors here when you are doing micro injection and this can be used for creating transgenic organisms especially the mammals i guess you got an idea of micro injection here so when you are injecting the d uh, your dna into the nucleus of the particular host about some amount of dye is also been incorporated and those host cells which contain the dye would give an indication that they have also got the dna along with it and uh, let's go into the next method called the particle bombardment method uh, here a particle bombardment method is a technique in which the dna is been uh, it's combined with certain particles now what are the these particles they could be around sometimes gold or tungsten and the part particles will combine and conjugate to each other and by using certain guns okay like gene guns that's what we call them uh, you will take the host cell now here in this case it is a plant cell which we have and you have taken a protoplast and uh, into the protoplast cell what happens using the gene gun you will you will shoot the dna as well as the particles which have been combined together and um, with a high frequency when the gun is shooting the dna onto the cells onto the protoplast cells they happen to enter into the protoplast cells and then this is a process of transformation and then regeneration of the particular plant is been carried out now this method is used for genetic transformation of plants as well as many organisms and here it is applicable for plants having less regeneration capacity and those which fail to show sufficient response to agro mediated agro bacterium mediated gene transfer in rice corn uh, wheat chickpea sorghum and as well as the pigeon pea coming to the advantages and disadvantages of particle bombardment particle bombardment is a very simple and a convenient method and it involves coating the dna as well as the rna onto gold microcarrier particles and uh, pointing the nozzle and firing the device and usually no need to obtain the protoplast as intact cells can be penetrated also sometimes 
And the manipulation of the genome of the subcellular organelles can also be done by using the particle bombardment method. And uh, the use of potentially harmful viruses or toxic chemical treatment as gene delivery vehicle is not needed when you're using a particle bombardment method of gene transfer. And it can transfer DNA or RNA exactly where it is needed into the organism. So these are the advantages of the particle bombardment method. And coming to the disadvantages, if you go to consider the plant, it can be uh, trans genes can be transferred by using agrobacterium vectors. Okay, but uh, compared to the agrobacterium medi mediator transformation, the particle bombardment method is having a lesser efficiency. And here you require specialized equipment, and the device as well as the consumables are being considered to be costly. And sometimes associated cell damage can also occur along with particle bombardment. And uh, there also exist some concerns on the random integration of this particular DNA onto the host. And sometimes even multiple copy insertions could also cause gene silencing. So uh, these are the these are the different methods which we have for gene transfer, generally speaking. There are other methods also, uh, which I'm, but I'm not going to the details more of it because uh, at a degree level discussion, I guess this would be sufficient for you guys. So let me just summarize what are the gene transfer techniques. You have the vector-based methods where you use vectors. And once the recombinant DNA is being formed, uh, we might transfer these recombinant DNA which has been found by vectors by various techniques and that could include transformation, conjugation, electroporation or sometimes transduction or sometimes you have vectorless methods where vectors are not used and sometimes the genes of interest are being transferred by various methods sometimes like chemicals you can use polyethylene glycol, DEAE uh, and all that different chemicals can be used for that then you can also use micro injection where the needles are being used. Computer controlled needles are being used to transfer the DNA into the nucleus of a particular host cell. Or you can use electroporation as we had mentioned uh, earlier. Electric pulses are being given onto the host cells. Or you can use liposome mediator methods where liposomes or the DNA is being covered by lipid vesicles and then they are being transferred and in some cases even sound waves can be used as a vectorless method to produce uh, or to transfer the genes into the cell. So I guess you got a, an overall view of some of the techniques which are being used in gene transfer. Thank you for now.